question, what makes a character evil? In this channel, we analyze how evil and badass some of your favorite characters are. Today's target, the one and only Avatar Aang. Oh, You know the gist, we need a set metric which determines the level of evilness, villainy, and badassery. There are only two rules. Number one, as always, they need to be immoral as hell, whether intentional or not. Any good deed they do, though, is negative three points. Number two, remember, we are not just analyzing how evil they are, but also how badass they are, meaning their ability to throw hands while trying to achieve their goals gotta be immaculate. Let's get it. I know what you're thinking, but Aang is not an evil character. He's peaceful and believes all life is sacred. I guess we'll find out because these guys he just chopped don't think so. Remember, we are judging them whether they were intentionally bad or not. Upon death, Avatar Roku was reincarnated and Aang was born and later raised by Monk Gyatso, a senior monk at the Southern Air Temple and friend of the late Avatar Roku. Even prior to learning he was the Avatar, that he was him, Aang distinguished himself as the top G by becoming one of the youngest airbending masters in history by inventing a new technique. But as a result of Fire Lord Sozin's increasingly hostile attitude towards the other nations, the senior monks decide to reveal Aang's nature as the Avatar four years before the traditional age and relocate him to one of the other air temples. Learning that he was to be taken away from Gyatso, caused Aang to bitch away on his flying bison, Appa, before being caught by a storm. The life or death conditions triggered the Avatar state, encasing the young Avatar and his bison in an air pocket among icebergs, where he remained suspended for a century. Although Monk Gyatso had snuck into Aang's bedroom late at night to tell him that he would not be relocated to the Eastern Air Temple, it had already been too late. This is where Aang messed up because due to his departure and running away from his responsibilities as the Avatar, he unintentionally gets his whole nation massacred by the Fire Nation in search of him. Imagine being in one of the temples and then boom, you're getting jumped and scorched due to some kid you don't even know about. Personally, I would snitch. I would be like he's at the Southern Temple and have some of my people save it. Damn, it's so crazy how the firebenders really wipe it out every single airbender though. Like damn, nobody tried taking refuge at Ba Sing Se. Bro, just get to Ba Sing Se pretending to be a non-bender and you're chilling. They were too noble for their own good. After 100 years of suspended animation in an iceberg, the 12-year-old Aang is freed when found by Katara and Sokka, yet unaware of the events that occurred during his rest. His reawakening catches the attention of Prince Zuko, the banished son of the current Fire Lord. Here is where Aang endangers Sokka and Katara's whole village from Prince Zuko, who shows up to capture him since he's the Avatar. Well, he didn't know. I don't care. People could have been seriously hurt. Negative points for selflessly giving himself up for the sake of the village, though. But it's so crazy how no one was hanging with Aang the whole first season of the show. Peep these fights with Zoku. This one is crazy. Zuko shows up in the village trying to act all intimidating, but with no spidey senses whatsoever, he gets run sacked by Aang with a penguin. Even the penguin knew that was a dirty move. He's like, get off me. How do you not hear him coming though? And Zuko's buddies are fake too. How do you not warn your commander, making him look stupid out there? Look at how he throws it back. Personally, I'm burning the whole place just for that. I'm not letting anyone arch me like that. Looking like Raheem Sterling out there. Anyway, Aang is forced to leave, with Katara and Sokka accompanying him after they learn that he is the Avatar. Aang and his new friends visit the Southern Air Temple, where they meet a winged lemur whom Aang later names Momo. It is here that Aang learns that the Fire Nation wiped out his people, including Gyatso, which causes Aang to summon his Avatar spirit, and the other three nations find out the Avatar is back. Look at these dudes acting like he's the Messiah, and he's returned. Point. For revealing his biggest trump card, he should have kept the whole thing under wraps and used it to attack the Fire Nation with a secret invasion. Negative points on the badass scale. Why are you raging so much? Like, damn. Detach yourself from worldly desires and become wind. Be like Zaheer. My man detached himself from earthly nonsense and he was flying like a Kryptonian. Anyway, looking for a short break from their travels, Aang brings the group to the Earth Kingdom's Kyoshi Island, where he seeks to ride Elephant Koi, enormous fish who inhabit the surrounding waters. However, the group are captured by the Kyoshi Warriors, a group of warriors consisting entirely of girls who protect the island. Negative points for getting jumped and captured by females. In the words of Sokka, how are you gonna get jumped by females? Damn, maybe the new Netflix adaptation is right for toning the sexism down. The trio are freed when Aang proves he's that guy, the Avatar, a reincarnation of Avatar Kyoshi, and he quickly gains reverence among the island's inhabitants. His popularity, especially among the girls, he had these girls passing out over him. Aang's Riz needs to be studied because bro is not Michael Jackson, he can't be doing that. Soon all the attention goes to his head and creates a rift between him and Katara. Negative points because this guy was selling the bag with Katara trying to make her jealous. Meanwhile, Sokka is embarrassed after being jumped by girls 
in combat training and strives to prove himself stronger than the Kyoshi warriors. When he suffers further disrespect, he swallows his pride and respectfully asks to be trained by their leader Suki, who agrees. But damn, my man was opening a portal for all the bugs to come in with all that screaming to the lord. Anyway, back to Aang. Aang's desire for popularity soon puts himself and Katara at risk when he tries to ride an Unagi sea serpent, as well as the whole island when Zuko gets word of his location. Point. His childish behaviors keep endangering everyone he meets. Zuko shows up and attacks, but Aang, Katara, and Sokka all manage to escape before the entire island is decimated. Aang uses the Unagi to extinguish the fires caused by the Fire Nation attack. Negative points for the water works, but that doesn't save that kid who won't have food for the next few weeks since everything is burned down. My boy is gonna experience that African level hunger. He's gonna have sugar and water for dinner. After after this, Aang continues to act childish but slowly starts accepting his role as the Avatar with taking more and more responsibility. He decides to learn water bending at the North Pole where the Fire Nation hears about it and plans to attack. Point. His presence alone is a threat wherever he goes. He endangers hundreds of people who had remained safe for most of the war. In an attempt to help the Water Tribe from the Fire Nation attack which was his fault to begin with, he turns into the Blue Spirit with the help of the Avatar State. This is where he just massacres and dog walks all these Fire Nation ops. I know they are the ops but damn, they got families too, you know, I mean all life is sacred, right? So peep this. After becoming the blue spirit holding godlike powers, he decides to dog walk everybody. I'm counting all the injuries and deaths in the scale because ain't no way these dudes up here survived. I better not hear y'all in the comments saying that they swam. They ain't swimming after that, they might have well eaten a devil fruit because the sea is not their friend right now, but my man Aang was really acting like God. Too much ego, that's why I'm saying he's a villain. Look at this, he gets up and he's like praise me. Tell me those hands are not saying praise me. You don't believe me. Okay, he comes around this corner and tell me why he only bitch slaps these dudes not bowing to him, and then he runs sacks this dude. Honestly, this one was homie's fault. Bro, why are you just standing there? Dude was starstruck, acting like he's just seen Ice Spice. Anyway, the Fire Nation start running, but Aang chases them down. He was really on demon time. He tsunamis them away, but the way he did it, at least 200 people are getting badly injured if not dead, and this is just the first season. But let me know down below if y'all want book two and three in the future. Final score. Come on out, little boy. You're about to be...